Hey everybody, check it out. What's up? It's Heracles Porsche's professional intro. Yay! Hey, what's up everybody? Heracles Porsche here, aka Golden Lock. Uh, we're going to be talking about star cards today. We're going to take a look at all of their uses, how they stack up against each other, and uh, what I think of the game mechanic in general and what I'd recommend to the game developers. So let's talk about star cards, people. And let us begin at the top. Uh, first off, here's your thermal detonator. I believe everybody begins with this item unlocked. And I use this thing a ton during the beta. Uh, you can throw this thing anytime, even when you have the personal shield up. It's, um, something I think everybody will use at some point but uh, once you get the impact grenade you'll never use again even though this thing has a slightly wider splash radius the impact grenade in yeah it has a slightly wider splash radius and a slightly shorter cooldown time than the impact grenade but in my mind the impact grenade beats it out so once you get to impact grenades you might find you never use the thermal detonator again Next up is the Scout Pistol. Um, in my mind, this thing is just as good as a DL-44 pistol that you can have on all the time. So I really just don't see much use in having that. Mind you, you can unlock this item very early on for very cheap. So you can you can have an extra toy to play with very on, early on in your career. But it's uh, I consider it pretty close to useless. Um, I know not everyone will agree with that, but this card just does absolutely nothing for me. Next up is the Ion Torpedo, and in certain game modes, um, this item is a beast. I'm talking about mainly Walker Assault, um, specifically playing Walker Assault on the Rebel side. Uh, this thing can fire at uh, walkers, both the ATAT -AT and the ATST. So th this item will be contributing extra damage uh, during the walker damage phases. Um, it'll be no it'll be a noticeable amount of extra damage, um, and it's pretty much a guaranteed hit on uh, those ATSTs as well. So you can beat those up pretty badly with the ion torpedo and you can also shoot at uh, stationary turrets, those those big turrets that you find on Celest. So it can be very handy pretty much any time you're on Celest. And on top of all that, you can take shots at starfighters as well. And uh, the reliability on hitting starfighters is going to depend a lot on how good the pilot is. Um, a really good pilot could probably dodge this the majority of the time, but every every now and then, even a talented pilot is going to get hit by one of these things. Um, a uh, less than talented pilot, you can you can mess them up. So that is the ion torpedo. I would definitely make this part of your arsenal. Uh, it's not it's not e for Walker Salt. It's not useless for the Imperials I either. But uh, if you're playing Rebel Walker Assault, you will want to have this thing equipped. It is awesome. Uh, next up is the Pulse Cannon, another great star card. Another card you can unlock early and use for pretty much the rest of your career. I actually didn't use it early in my career, but um, definitely using it a whole lot now. Um, some things to know about the star card. Um, it's a charge up shot, so you got to hold the trigger down and release. Um, it there's a, only a certain amount of time you can keep it charged. So once it charges up to its maximum, um, it's really strong. You can kill any infantry with a body shot. You don't even need a headshot with the sniper rifle; just a body shot. Um, when it's in that fully charged up phase. If you are worried about wasting the shot because the shot goes off automatically after a certain amount of time, just hit Y, switch 
switch back to your blaster and then uh, switch back to this uh, pulse cannon again and uh, you're you're back in business and you're not wasting your shot over the cooldown the cooldown timer so um, you, you'll see uh, you'll you should see what I'm talking about if you watch my graduation game video which is the one that's right before this one um, what else do I need to say about this? Um, you need, you might need to learn how to lead your target a little bit with this too. If something, if a target's holding perfectly still, you will have no problem killing it. Uh, if it's, if it's moving, you might need to learn how to lead the shots. So there's certain skills in learning how to use this thing. You got to learn how to lead your targets. You got to learn how to fire at just the right moment, but once you master those two aspects of the pulse rifle you will be in business and the, the kills will start to feel like they come to you very easily next up we have the impact grenade i already kind of covered it when i talked about the thermal detonator but uh, it's an excellent little grenade because uh, you toss it it kills instantly uh, if there's any infantry even remotely close to it it's a one-hit kill and uh, yeah, it'll just become a fairly steady part of your arsenal. Uh, you can you can fire it off anytime, even when you're got a personal shield on, and you can throw it through other people's um, you know big shields, whatever. So yeah, just a very handy little grenade, and it'll probably be a staple of your career. Uh, it feels like an abusable game mechanic for sure. Um, okay, so these next three star cards, I'm going to kind of talk about them as a group. Uh, See, so these are all cards with charges to them. Um, these are the you, I think you unlock all three of these at roughly the same time. These are the first cards that you can put into your middle slot. It only really makes sense to take one of them. I, I guess I took two. Um, the one that I most highly recommend is Focus Fire, because I think this card can help pretty much any blaster. Um, it won't help the DL-44 quite as much as some of the other things, but uh, it's just a very handy card. Even the uh, more accurate blasters, like the T-21s, I feel like it's buffing them as well. Out of these three, I'd say the Focus Fire is best. The Cooling Cell um it's just kind of a card it's great if you're if you suck with the heat first or you have some some issues with heat uh but once you learn how to to vent it might feel like a wasted card ion shot has just such a narrow has a narrow range of usage I'll, i might play with it in a bit but um it, if you played a lot of walker assault for the rebels i could imagine wa wanting to have this uh, for those walker phases, uh, and assuming you were also decent at the vent, at venting the heat like I was talking about, but really the focus fire is the most useful overall, but the, all three of these cards are really just there to tide you over until you get scan pulse and personal shield in my mind. If you're taking, if you have a decent blaster, you don't really need any three of these cards and you're much better off with scan pulse and personal shield once you get there get to those cards so uh, really pick one of these to tide you over until you get to scan pulse and personal shield uh, here's the ion grenade um, I actually use this a ton during beta I don't use it so much these days uh, I think a lot of players underestimated it during beta but now that we have the ion torpedo uh it's it's it, it's not a useless card you can use it to quickly clear uh droids which can definitely be a pain and you can use it to mess up uh atst so if you had both the ion cards on at the same time you could mess up an atst pretty insanely but those are just i just find i just find that's a narrow selection of uses so i really don't touch the ion grenade too much this is the homing shot you'll see I haven't even bothered to pick it up not because it's a bad weapon but because it's just it's too easy to use I don't it doesn't feel like a weapon that helps you build skill in any way just I would suggest that 
if you do use this, you use it in combination with the jump pack. Um, because uh, if you have a, if you're at a higher elevation than someone, um, it's pr you need to be somewhere where they can't take cover. Because once you launch one of these items at somebody, um, they get a warning indication that something is coming. So uh, if they're even a reasonably experienced player, they will take cover. If you get really high up, it might be hard for certain players to dodge these things. Um, I have used I have believe it or not I've actually got plenty of use of this weapon even though I haven't bought it because you you get this item as sort of a cooldown weapon in your right hand when you're one of those elite guards for Princess Leia or Emperor Palpatine and I've also used the borrow uh, my uh, you know whatever the borrow my friend friends card star card option so I'm plenty experienced with this weapon even though I haven't bought it but uh, I just refused to really use it too often because it's just it's too easy it's just too easy for me um, and it's it, it just it's not a skill building weapon and you pretty much need a higher elevation to uh, to make good use of it and if I'm at that higher elevation I prefer my pulse cannon because that's an insta kill um, all right, next is a jump pack. This is another awesome card. Um, I use this thing all the time. Uh, it It's kind of a two-in-one use. It's a speed boost, and it gets you to uh, higher elevations. So if you're playing on a map that's even a little bit open, even a little bit open, you will be using the jump pack quite a bit. Um, I think when I'm on Walker Assault, this thing is like almost always on cooldown. I'm just using this thing almost every time it's up. Um, there's, on, on aside from just using it to get around quicker and using it to get up to higher elevations where you can snipe or uh, fire, fire off whatever power up you need to, um, it's got other uses as well. You can use it to just kind of like jet, you know, just do different maneuvers like jump over the enemy, get in behind them, you know, land a shot they're not expecting. It's just it's just very versatile uh, movement boost. So you really have to have the jump pack and uh, make it one of the cards that you upgrade relatively soon because you, uh, you want that cooldown minimized probably more than any other card, I would say. So yeah, very handy card. Ob obviously, there might be a couple levels where it's useless, but... For the levels that are open, this card is just a must-have. Next is a scan pulse, kind of the opposite deal. This is this is a card that um, is really intended for close quarters. Although um, it could probably be handy on just about any map. It's this is like a hack. This using this card almost feels like a cheat. You you set it off and it scans a relatively close area, and if there's any enemies, it highlights them. So it makes it, if you're guarding an uplink or something, if there's walls around, or if you're in cargo, anytime you want to see where people are, which is pretty often, and there's any kind of cover in your area, just set off a scan pulse and you'll find them. So, and, uh, so that would go if you're defending an area or if you're am trying to ambush an area where there's any kind of cover. The scan pulse is your friend, so I would definitely grab this card. Um, I generally favor the defensive cards, and this is one I have in my repertoire the majority of the time. Okay, then finally you get to the trait cards, and this goes in. These go in your trait slot. You pick one. It stays up. It gives you a buff pretty much for. You know, pretty much forever until you pick a new card, and um, it starts with a sm small buff. And the buff, if you are really, good, if you're a talented player, if you have, you can get good kill streaks. The buff gets stronger and stronger, and then when you die, it goes back to being weaker again. So uh, it's definitely important to pick a a buff that is good on the first level, so that it's always useful. I'd say, um, not. A couple of these cards are good. In my mind, they're really just 
they're mostly just there to uh, take you, you know, to have until you get to Bounty Hunter. It's like these other three cards I reviewed. None, a couple of these cards are okay, but uh, until they're, in my mind, they're really just there until you level up and have Bounty Hunter, because this is the best of the traits for sure. But um, I'll just take a quick look. This one felt like a crap card. I didn't, that level one, it felt like it did nothing for me. I noticed no boost to the to like notice no noticeable boost to my health health regeneration speed at all at level one and I gave up on this card really fast. Um, Scout's a handy little card because uh, there are pl plenty of situations where you would not want to show up on the enemy scanners. Um, would probably help a lot more in maps with cover or you know things blocking people's view of you. Um, it won't. I don't. You know, it's just. It's just a handy card for uh, being able to surprise people, and people can that radar can become a crutch for a lot of people. So uh, if you put the scout on and you're an offensive player who's got any kind of ability to ambush people, so the scout could be handy. The bodyguard is also a great all-around card to buff you. Um, uh, I think any, I think pretty much any player, no matter how, what their play style, could benefit from having Bodyguard. It's a very great card. Um, it's actually almost as good as the as the Bounty Hunter, just because um, there are so many explosions in this game. This game, I'm sh I'm sure you've already guessed, this game is just explosions all the freaking time. Grenades being set off by players, you know. Um, even the bigger maps in Walker Salt, there's all kinds of explosions going off. It's just explosions. This this game could be called Star Wars Explosions. So this is like, and uh, it says decrease damage by a small amount, but it's enough that I noticed. Level one is enough that I noticed it. It might be like 30% or something, but I'm pretty sure level one was enough to save me from enough deaths to be noticeable. So. Um, pretty decent, and then if you if you're a really talented player and you get this to level three, um, you're really resisting pretty much damage from everything, so that turn it becomes pretty good at level three. Um, and that is everything. This is the smoke grenade. Uh, this is another of what I consider to be kind of a lame duck card. Um, not useless, but uh, if you put it down right before you went for a hack or something, really the smoke grenade's only purpose is to stop homing shots. Um, it the the problem with it is, and it's only to prevent people from locking on. If somebody's already locked on to you with a missile, top throwing down a smoke grenade won't stop anything. So you can prevent lock on. That's it. Not that not useless, but really pretty weak overall. And the, the smoke grenades uh smoke that it makes is not it does not it doesn't block your visibility that much it's it's kind of a weak smoke in the air it's not that difficult to see through so um unless you were up against a team of people that were constantly using homing shot all the time uh it's it's a lame duck card it's not that great so we can move on uh explosive shot um i consider this another card to I don't know it's 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 not my personal choice I do know there are certain weapons it can make amazing like one of the first blasters you unlock uh, I forget what it's called it's it's called like the the D the DLT I know it can turn the DLT into an amazing weapon but uh, I don't I don't use the DLT that much uh, I prefer the precision blasters um, so it's explosive shot is not that useful to me. Um, I, I like I said I stick with the uh, I stick with this gun most of the time. The DL44 in close quarters, the T21 in uh, long range. So the rifles that I prefer, it's not overly helpful. But you might get more out of using the uh, explosive shot if you if you use different types of rifles than I am. But in my mind still a waste. Scan Pulse, Personal Shield, the way to go. Uh, much handier to have a defensive card than something that buffs a blaster, I, I believe. Very strong believer in that. Okay, Flash Grenades. Another lame Duck Star card. Um, 
super lame duck, even more lame duck than the smoke grenade. Um, it it has a lot of drawbacks. First of all, you can blind yourself. Second of all, you can blind your team. And third of all, uh, even if you, the blind doesn't last that long. So even if you were in a situation where you could uh, you could find a way to blind only the enemies and not yourself or your team, uh, it's not going to apply for long enough to have any kind of effect. So it's just, it's lame. It can mess with you, it can mess with your teammates, but really it can't do anything. So forget the flash grenade. Garbage. Next up, personal shield. I've already indicated to you, I've already talked about this kind of quite a few times, but it's an awesome card, especially in bigger maps um it you it has it blocks all damage from pulse rifles and blasters for a certain amount of time uh obviously i have the upgraded version i think i think before it's upgraded it's like a couple seconds shorter but explosives still a problem uh it does it does have a slight liability in that once you have it up you have a large array of weapons you yourself can't use so you can't use uh anything like the stark like any like any of these card any cards that like you have to that turn into like a weapon you whip out you can't use your blaster you can't use cycle rifle bowcaster barrage um pulse cannon i don't think you can use that either i think the only thing you can do offensively once you have the personal shield up is to toss uh, grenades, um, like the, you can only toss impact and thermal detonators, and you can melee. That's the only kind of damage you can do once you have the personal shield up. But if you're aware of that and use it intelligently, it's such a handy card. Uh, you can use this card to help you get hacks down, either on uplinks or on drop pod, anytime you're going for any kind of objective. It's a very handy card, very handy to have. Um, if you're in a big map and you just want to cross some open terrain safely, uh, flip it on. There might, you know, um, if you uh, just are just in any kind of bad situation where someone's just surprised, you, usually if someone surprises you, you don't have time to flip this on. But if you're going for a hero token, flip this on. If you if you have a power up like the thermal imploder and you want to be able to run in there safely and set that thing off you can you can do that too so it's great with thermal imploder and grenades those are all the uses for it it's just a very handy card there's just so many situations where you just want to stay alive a little longer and even if it cuts you off from using some of your weapons you are going to find uses for this thing if you're in even a remotely open map uh, watch out for melee attacks when you flip this thing on. Uh, lightsabers uh, can still cut through it. Homing shots can still cut through it. You, you'll learn what can and can't cut through it, but the vast majority of the time that I die while personal shield is on, it's from a melee attack. All right, next we have Barrage, another excellent card. You pull out a grenade launcher. You fire this, this thing fires a volley of three grenades. Each of them do about 50 damage, but it's really not too difficult to um, get somebody with a couple grenades at once. Um, and it is just incredibly handy. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it to you any better than that. It's an awesome grenade launcher. I use this thing all the freaking time. And if you have kind of any any situation where you're like elevated terrain you want to get somebody that's a little around a corner uh barrage is great and it definitely is handy to have scan pulse with this thing so yeah um uh barrage, barrage is just a great card i abuse it i feel dirty abusing it anyway bounty hunter um i've already covered the traits um this is the card i used in that I, this is a trade I had on when I made my graduation video. This is what, like, this is, uh, I played, this makes every game I play awesome. Um, anytime I get a kill, I have a chance to get a power up. And it says low chance, but it's, it doesn't feel that, it's like 30, 
percent. It's like you have like a one in three chance to get a power up um, every time you kill someone. It's it's not even that bad at level one, and uh, I don't know the exact exact statistics of it, but but it's a decent chance even at level one, and it is it's just it's great. It's just so great to get extra power ups, and uh, it's especially good on pod that pod mode where that has like the limited power ups um but yeah i, I highly recommend this card you kind of have to it takes a little skill to use the best because you kind of have to be uh mindful of it keep chucking down the power ups as you get them so you're not wasting it but uh very very handy to continually get power ups and uh, or when you get this thing to level three, it is a beast. I mean, you're gonna get beginning. Every kill is gonna turn almost pretty much every kill is gonna turn into you getting a power up, and on top of that, it resets your star cards. So, uh, I mean, if you're you can chain together lots of kills with your pulse cannon or barrage or whatever you're using. Probably it'll be pulse cannon, but um, it's just a great card, and I mean, bodyguard's good too, but uh, you're. It just depends. Do you want to survive explosions better, or do you want to make more? Yeah, bounty hunter. Get it. You will love it. Um, sharpshooter. I use this thing during the beta. Uh, I compare it to bounty hunter. Forget it. Bounty hunter is the winner. Uh, I skipped it. Cycler rifle. This is another card I used. A ton during the beta, it got nerfed into the ground. Mainly the nerf was, uh, it's got an insane bullet drop now. So, um, it went from being, so during the beta it was very easy to get, uh, it does a lot of damage on body shots, but it's an instant kill on headshots. So, it was used a lot during the beta, but the nerf made it so that it has insane bullet drops. So, it's very hard to get those headshots. It does penetrate shields, that means the personal shield. Or the power-up shield, so it is a great weapon that way. But it's just it's so difficult to use, and uh, that doesn't make it a bad star card. I think an incredibly talented player could probably make great use of this. Uh, it would if you got good with it. I would I think it would be the kind of card that would kill a lot of people who are going for uh, you know hacks on uplinks or drop pods or whatever. But yeah, not useless, but doesn't compete well with the other cards. Um, Bowcaster, uh, kind of the same. It's the last card you unlock, so you might think it's amazing, but uh, it's it's. I've actually had a lot of fun with this card, but uh, again, it doesn't really compare to it. And like, guess what? It's another explosive weapon. Um, so it. You, in order to make it at, at least remotely useful, you pretty much have to charge it up. It'll, you'll, if you charge it up, it'll get to five shots. Uh, if you don't want to waste the charge, do the same trick I told you with the pulse cannon. Just whip back to your blaster and then pull this thing out again. Um, with five charges, it'll, it'll kill uh, anything that's kind of, it'll kill anything that's like kind of close and right in front of you, but not too close. If you shoot this standing directly next to a wall, if uh, anybody swerves directly right, of, right in front of you, including, especially including uh, your teammates, you will find explosive splash damage will kill you. So do not fire this. It, I, I thought this thing was going to be like a shotgun, shotgun, charge up shotgun, but it's not. It's just, it's a charge up short range explosive. It can be fun because somebody can pop out and you can just like, one hit smash them i've got plenty of double kills with this thing but uh it's a fun card but it doesn't doesn't really stack up that well against barrage barrage is just more useful overall but uh fun card destructive card um it's high on the list but it just doesn't compete well with uh my other favorite cards which i've already mentioned so that's it that's all the star cards i hope um i hope you've enjoyed Hearing me yammer about the individual star cards, we'll follow this up with a little bit of discussion about uh, star cards in general. So, 
first off, let's talk about my two hands. Here's my two dominant hands that uh, have come to be the the hands I use the vast majority of the hand. First hand. This is like a this is my hand for uh, wide open spaces. Um, if the map is open at all, here's a great hand. Um, jump pack, personal shield, and pulse cannon. Uh, I've already explained what all these cards do. Jump pack lets me get around. The pulse cannon lets me snipe, and the um, personal shield protects me anytime I'm crossing open spaces or need to do uh, need to do anything out in the open. My second main hand. Pretty much, I pretty much always have this hand now. Uh, this is my grenade spam hand. This is uh, uh, impact grenade uh, in in the left barrage in the right. The barrage is probably my main thing that I use to destroy people. Here's my other hand. Uh, that middle card could be replaced for sure with some with something else. Uh, uh, I might I might swap that for personal shield or maybe I'll play with the ion one I don't know, but um, this is when I'm playing uh, Walker Assault, uh, especially Rebels or Solust, and I switch one of my hands out for this. Well, usually I'll switch the Bombard for this hand, but uh, like I said, that ion torpedo is amazing, uh, and that barrage can actually do okay damage on vehicles too. And those are the three dominant hands that I use. This one is also one I use a little bit on um, uh, like drop pod type game modes uh, that are just the just the uh, pulse cannon for whatever reason is just it's going to be too hard to get that off. Um, so uh, this would be yeah, this is a handy hand to use for. A lot of the uh, drop pod for the drop pod game type and uh, could just be a decent overall hand for a lot of game modes. Anything that's um, kind of like a medium sized level, this hand would be great. And these hands are just play, this, these are just random hands. Uh, I made this for if I wanted to, like extra safety hacking up links, but I don't really use this or this or this so yeah the really it's these first four hands that are the ones that i use especially these first three um and uh, like i already covered bounty hunter this is just awesome um so yeah though that's those are i've discussed all the cards the card combinations i use most often um and yeah so now you know everything about how i use star cards uh so Let's talk about the let's talk about star cards as a mechanic on general. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad mechanic. Uh, I just think uh, the way I let's just talk about the fun value of star cards. Um, I think you can pretty much guess from the description of every star card I've used how much fun I've gotten from each individual star card, but when I take away it, uh, when I take when I take a look at the way that uh, star cards affect this game, um, these cooldowns really, when I think about them, they're pretty short. You know, getting to toss a grenade every 12 seconds, that's a pretty short cooldown. Getting to fire an amazing body shot kill sniper rifle every 50 seconds, and that's pretty frequent. And if I if I get a streak, it'll constantly reset because I have Bounty Hunter. So um, I have used this game's mechanics. I, I've learned this game's mechanics, and I've used them to absolutely dominate people. And that is awesome. But just because I've done that doesn't necessarily mean they're good mechanics. Um, I'm just trying to be real. Uh, I just think it's too frequent. I mean, like I have, I have used the games, this game's mechanics to get like, you know, crazy kill streaks with this pulse cannon, and uh, I don't, I probably shouldn't be allowed to be that powerful. I should, probably should not be allowed to uh, string together a ridiculous number of shots with an instant, with like, 
you know, a super easy to use sniper rifle. I shouldn't be able to constantly, constantly spam grenades uh, with barrage. So, um, I don't think star cards are an inherently bad mechanic, but I think it's, uh, I think something needs to be done to make some of these cards less spammable. Not all of them, just just some of them. And also, by the way, these these charges um, may as well be infinite for me now. For high level players, uh, I want more of these. I just buy them. Look, um, get charges, sure. Um, now I can spam this thing. Um, do uh, it's spammable for me now because I have I have nothing else. I have a lot of vanity stuff left that I could buy, but. Really, it's like why um, you but I can spam these all day, so the only the only thing the fact that certain cards have charges on them does is a uh, me all it does is a it means you can't use like scan pulse and personal shield at the same time because that would be ridiculous. They have to be in the middle. You have to pick one or the other for your middle slot. So that's an important limitation. But other than that, um. These cards don't feel like they're limited in any way for me as a high level player and that's not a good mechanic because it means that the low level players who are st still saving up credits, they can't spam these cards the way that I can. And uh, so that's, that's I mean this card's, not, this game's, we already know this game's not balanced. The high level players have an edge over the low level players for sure because of star cards and a little bit because of blasters. Um, but uh yeah it, this this and this does have a cooldown but it's like what is it this is 5 seconds i mean that's a that is that is silly um 20 seconds is a little more reasonable but uh i can i'm i can throw this thing up pretty often i don't have to worry about charges that that doesn't affect me as a high level player um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that in order to, uh, make this game more fun, uh, something needs to be done about cer some of these cards being spammable. I don't think Pulse Cannon, 15 seconds might not seem like a spammable number to you, but keep in mind, you know, keep in mind, uh, the traits can help you spam particularly level three of Bounty Hunter. Uh, there's card, there's a card refresh power up, and um, 15 seconds is 10 to 15 seconds is probably roughly the time between most of your kills anyway. So to me, this is like this this is like these cards can be spammed. There's there's I don't have to put any strategy into using them at the optimal time or anything, just whenever they're up, use them. And it feels like it's pretty often. Um, and mind you, some of these cooldown numbers you're looking at is, are because I upgraded, because I put a ton of time into the game to, to make them stronger. But even still, it's, uh, it's, it's silly. It's silly how often I can do some of these things. Um, especially Pulse Cannon and especially Barrage. Uh... And jump back, I would actually, I'd be upset if they extended the cooldown because um, there, there's, jump pack helps keep the pace of the action up quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of running back to objectives in this game, and that's the most boring part of the game. Jump pack keeps you from having to suffer through that. So um, I wouldn't, I'd be sad if any of these, if this card or any of the cards that I, you know, that I mentioned as being kind of lame that got messed with. This card doesn't need to be messed with. Uh, but all of these other, all these grenade cards need to be less spammable. And Pulse Cannon is, you know, I'm, I'm talking about nerfs for cards that make me a ridiculously good infantry person because I want, I just want this game to be more strategic for for everybody these this game has if you're in close quarters 
grenades are going off all the time. If you're in the if you're in a distance map, it's not as bad with pulse cannon, but they're going off pretty frequently. So yeah, something should be done about the spammy nature of star cards, especially good grenade cards. I think I have so yeah, I I know it's a very tiny chance that anyone working on this game will see this video, but I thought I would just take a shot in the dark and uh, get that out there. Um, I know we could always patch this game, and that's probably a pipe dream that they will uh, change the mechanics to make the game more fun for what I believe would be the majority of the player base. But uh, I thought I would just put that little dream out there that we could kind of remove the spam ability of some of these star cards. But anyway, it's not a bad system. It just needs to be tweaked in order to make it the most fun it could be. So um, I hope my discussion on star cards has been entertaining, useful, whatever for you. And um, I welcome all of your feedback. So that is everything, folks. Until next time, Battlefronties, I shall see you star side.